Hey, next podcast, Lightning and Thunder. And that's like a fun topic. We're going to talk about lightning and thunder. What causes lightning? What causes thunder? So let's get at that right now. Hey, what is lightning? Lightning is uh, an atmospheric discharge of electricity accompanied by thunder, which typically occurs during a thunderstorm. Other things can cause lightning. Interesting thing I've found is when we're doing research here is that actually um, volcanic activity can cause uh, a lightning. I didn't know that. That was kind of cool. Um, it's similar to a common spark from static electricity. So if you look at this cool picture here of this kid, maybe you've ever uh, gone down one of these cool slides here and um, you feel the static charge. Basically what you get is you get a charge that's opposite charges, positive versus negative. And some things can strip um, things of, of a charge and create a charge. So this little boy right here, he um, has a particular charge and his hair now is standing on end as he goes down the uh, down the slide. You've sparked other people, but if there's a, you know, here's, here, look, we got a positive and a negative, and then there needs to be a discharge. This is when you like, you uh, shock somebody, and then when that discharge occurs, that is, um, well, that's lightning. What causes lightning? Well, here's it's about separation of positive and negative charges. Necessary for lightning is caused when water droplets rise and collide with falling hailstones. So even though there might be a thunderstorm that doesn't have hail in it, there's hailstones in the thunderstorm. They just melt before they get to the ground. The hailstones then strip electrons, which have a negative charge, from the water droplets and cause the top of the cloud to become positively charged. Notice in the picture here, positively charged. And then the bottom would be negatively charged. Also, unnecessarily, the ground gets positively charged. So we've got this separation of charge. All right. The second step is then static electricity then builds up between the earth and the cloud and eventually a negatively charged spark in the form of an invisible lightning bolt comes down the cloud. As this bolt reaches towards the ground, it is met with an upward moving positively charged spark. The two collide. We have an explosion occur, that's the thunder, causing us to see a flash that we call lightning. The positive charges from the ground travel up the bolt to neutralize the crowd. Basically, it's trying to reach neutral charge. And so the bolt goes, um, as you can see, we have this negative charge, and yeah, it goes that way. So, so here's the steps. All right, so that's what causes lightning. All right, hey, um, let's do a little video clip of somebody else explaining what causes lightning, uh, more of a meteorologist guy. Hello, today we're talking about how lightning forms. Now the first thing you have to have with lightning, you have to have a cloud. So we have to get the air rising. So you get rising air, much like you have in the middle of a summertime day when thunderstorms are very common. So the air starts to rise. The moisture inside that parcel of air, the water vapor, it cools when it reaches the dew point that water vapor will condense out into tiny drops that make up the cloud. It goes from a water vapor to a liquid. So now, as the air rises, cools, you get clouds, and if the air continues to rise, the clouds get bigger and bigger. And even in the summertime, they can reach a level, especially in thunderstorms, of 40, 50, maybe even 60,000 feet up. And in the tops of the clouds, the temperature is below freezing. And the water, you can have the raindrops that will turn into ice. And you can even have snow up there, even in the middle of summer, although you'd never see it because it would melt before it hits the ground. Anyway, so in now in this large cloud that goes way up in the atmosphere, you've got water and you've got particles of dust and you've got particles of ice in there. And they're all rubbing against each other and, and as they collide. This causes static electricity. This causes electrical charges to build up. Now typically in the top of the cloud you'll have positive charges. Toward the middle of the cloud and toward the bottom you'll have negative. Now as a cloud moves over the ground that has this positive charge at the top, a negative charge at the bottom, what happens is positive charges will collect on the ground right underneath the cloud. And essentially all this electricity that's building up in the cloud, it essentially wants to get down into the ground. And if enough of a charge builds up and you have enough 
of a difference in the charges between the top of the cloud and the bottom and the ground, you'll have a discharge, you'll have a spark. And that spark is taking the electricity and allowing it to flow to equal out from the cloud down into the ground. That spark is what we know as a lightning bolt. All right, cool. Hopefully you learned from him as well. Hey, there are different types of lightning. Okay, what are the types of lightning? There's intra-cloud, means inside of a cloud, between the clouds. So that's this one right here. There is cloud to ground. That's the one everyone talks about. And this is the one that can cause some damage uh, to uh, people on the earth. And then there's even a cloud to cloud. So you can have cloud to cloud lightning. So there's different kinds of lightning, as it turns out. Actually, even more than this type of lightning. There's ball lightning and all kinds of other lightning. They're pretty cool as well. Thunder. Now, what we probably learned about thunder before, but thunder, every lightning bolt produces thunder. Um, why is there a delay? You probably realize that the differ there's a difference between the, when the lightning strikes and when the thunder uh, arrives. It, they actually are produced at exactly the same time. But here's the deal. Light travels one million times faster than sound. So therefore, it gets to you first. In fact, almost instantaneously, really, if you can see it. Sound travels at 330 meters per second. And probably some of you know this, but for every five seconds, so if you count 1,001, 1,002, 1,005, whatever, um, that will be one mile. So if it's, uh, you count to 1,001 and then you see hear the thunder, then it is a fifth of a mile away. So um, it happens instantaneously. I don't know if you've ever been out a side where the lightning and the thunder seem to happen at the same time. That means it's pretty much right on top of you. Um, and where we live here in the mountains of Colorado, lightning is a very big issue, isn't it? Um, um, what is thunder? What causes it? First of all, lightning causes thunder. I already said that, I guess. But it heats, here's how it works here. The lightning heats air up to 20,000 to 30,000 degrees Celsius. Whoa, that's hot. Oh my gosh, that's warmer than the, the surface of the sun. That's ah, really, really hot. Okay, this causes then an increase in air pressure, which causes the explosion. The explosion is the thunder. All right. Hey, lightning safety, you probably know this. If you live up in, up in the mountains of Colorado like we do, um, you should know these things. Um, if you don't, <laughs> listen up. Um, there's certainly been issues here, and even in our own high school, we've lost somebody with lightning. So it's, it's, a, it's a very big issue, isn't it? Uh, it can happen any time during a thunderstorm, by the way, before, during, or after. So there, obviously the most lightning strikes are in the middle of the thunderstorm, but don't feel like you're safe. Um, there's even rules at this high school when you can practice outside on the ball fields and such, um, uh, because uh, when they see lightning, it basically cancels pretty much everything um, because it's so dangerous. Um, you need to, of course, avoid metallic objects. You see, lightning is attracted to metallic objects, and so the lightning will travel through the metallic object, and it will, um, uh, yeah, so don't, 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 like have your golf club in your hand when you're out in a lightning storm. That'd be kind of silly. Um, it's attracted also to high pointy things. So um, you want to have high pointy things uh, not be near high pointy things. High pointy things would include mountains, tops of mountains and trees. Um, a lot of people I know, they like to climb these uh, 14ers, okay? These are 14,000 feet uh, 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 mountains around Colorado. And the general rule is that everyone wants to uh, start very early in the morning when they climb these. If you leave in the evening, or if you get up in the early afternoon, that's when the thunderstorms tend to hit, um, you are on the highest point, the 14,000 foot peak. And uh, people, of course, have died up there. And so you want to get off that mountain before it, um, the lightning strikes. So uh, high pointy things. Um, but that's actually a good thing because with the high pointy things, um, people have used that. You see, one of the problems with lightning, of course, it can damage so many things, your electronics and all this kind of stuff. And you know, old Ben Franklin and his whole shtick, he, he figured out how to, he uh, built a lightning rod. And when he built a lightning rod, basically you've got this device that's attracted, a, a tall pointy thing, and the lightning hits the tall pointy thing, and then it goes um, from the tall pointy thing, and it goes into um, uh, this metallic object, and then it goes into the ground. And this is called grounding. And then the electricity, instead of going into your building, so let's say I've got a building around this thing, with, you know, windows and whatever, and doors, um, then instead of it, you know, frying all of my electronics, it's just going to go into the ground. So it's actually a good thing to have um, a lightning rod. So... Well, hey, where does lightning occur? Lightning occurs, um, well, you can see a picture here. Kind of see where the common portions of lightning are. Here, um, we see quite a few in, in America. And Africa, surprisingly, also has quite a few. You live in Russia, you're probably pretty safe. So this is probably a cool map to see where uh, lightning occurs. Uh, a lot here in Indonesia, but, you know, the United States. In fact, the activity that you'll be doing in this class um, for this activity, whether you do it before or after the podcast, is going to kind of discuss the frequency of lightning. So you'll kind of get a, a feel of this. Hey, uh, this is a pretty interesting uh, chart from your textbook, I think, is um, what uh, f fatalities from um, severe weather. Uh, lightning right here. 
Um, so that for every 10 years, and this is actually just the average annual, meaning on average in the, between 1940 and 1949, 329 people died from lightning. And uh, that number has essentially dropped. I think that's a good thing, isn't it? Um, so people have gotten more aware of lightning fatalities. Tornadoes, here you can see um, there. So um, floods, hurricanes, and so the most deaths. Um, you know, we talk about uh, big issues, tornado floods and hurricanes. Guess what? More people have died from lightning than any of the others. So, wow, that's amazing. So in the 59 years from 1940 to 1998. So uh, interesting uh, table there. So lightning is a big issue, and uh, certainly here in Colorado, and even up here in Woodland Park, we've lost some people. In fact, the, uh, yeah. So I hope that uh, helps you understand lightning and uh, thunder. So I will see you in class.